Okay, so I want to start this uh, interpreting graphs packet uh, by looking at, actually I'm going to save the first four graphs for you, and I want to look at the last four, which, is, which are all on the last page, uh, front and back. I did flip the last page, so it's horizontal. Um, you might have to do that if you're completing this on Kami or in Schoology. Um, if you have a hard copy, you should be okay just turning your paper. Uh, this problem right up here, problem 11, we're not going to worry about. So the first thing when you get a graph like problem 12 is you want to notice what kind of graph it is. And right away, we're looking at um, position versus time. And that's important to note. Right, that the, the uh, y-axis is position um, and the x-axis is time. Because it won't always be that way. It can be velocity versus time or acceleration versus time. And although there are more graphs than that in, in this class, in this unit, really those are the three types that we're, we're uh, concerned with. Okay, um, where is the object at on this first question? So what it's asking for is, uh, the position of the object, right? Let me just be clear there. Now, position is on the y-axis, and position is x, right? It's on the y-axis. Um, and at one second, we can see, just by looking at the graph, that they tell us, right? Let me see if I can get a color here. That might be a little easier to see. At one second, we are at that point right there. And at nine seconds, we are at that point right there. And at both of those times, right, the y value is our position. And the y value is the second uh, part of um, this uh, coordinate notation, right? So it is the 1.2 um, is what I'm trying to say. So this is going to be 1.2, but don't forget the units. Uh, it is a position, so we're going to have meters. All right. What is the velocity of the object t equals 7 seconds? So velocity is not a right there question. We can't just um, look at 7 seconds, which just so we're clear, um, 7 seconds is right here, right? So um, what is going on at 7 seconds, right? Well, we know the position is somewhere between 3 and 4, but, uh, but we don't care about that. Right, we want velocity, and so velocity is not a right there question. And then we have the check down is usually we go to slope or area, and one of those is going to give us uh, the velocity of the object. So we have to remember um, what our formula for velocity is um, v equals delta x over t, and um, or we can write delta t, which might be easier here. Uh, let me see. I feel, let me try that. So um, we can see that this is equal to uh, the change in the y axis over the change in the x axis, which is equal to the slope. So if we just find the slope here at um, seven seconds we're going to have our answer for the velocity. So when we find the slope at 7 seconds, this instantaneous velocity, right, we actually, because this is such a nice graph, whoops, let me get a highlighter here, all right, that we can actually, oh boy, it's a whole lot of highlighter. Okay, let's see. Let's try that. So what we can do is we can all actually just take the, um, the slope of that purple line. Now, when you're taking the slope of the purple line, be nice to yourself and take points that you know. So uh, points that are clear. I, a, lot, a lot of times I like to take the end points. So if I take the end points, um, what points are those, right? Well, the end point of the purple segment would be these two right here. And this means I do not have to select to find the slope at seven seconds, right? Um, which is this green spot right here, right? Where I just drew the arrow, right? That's where I want to know the slope. And I put that star here. So we want to know the slope right there. That, that we can take any two points on that purple segment, and there's an infinite number of points there to choose from. 
I'm going to take the end two points um, and not use seven seconds. Once again, seven seconds is problematic because I don't know where over here it hits the y-axis. You might say 3.5, right? It looks like it's in between. I think it's actually 3.6. Um, yeah, because it looks like it goes up by 1.2 or down by 1.2. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that's 3.6, but, but let's just say we don't know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just take the endpoints. Those look like easy points to work with. Um, when I take, when I calculate the slope, I'm going to go ahead and my calculation is going to look like this. So we said it's changing. We said uh, slope. Let me see where I can write this. Maybe up here. M is equal to. Uh, the change in the y-axis, which is x, or position, over the change in the x-axis, which is time. I'm going to then rewrite this as xf minus xi over tf minus ti. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some points here to, uh, to plug in here. So which one of these is my final, right? And, it, and it's probably best to start with the denominator first because uh, time is easier to deal with. We know for a fact that time is always going to move forward, right? And in, in that, that if we are given time six seconds, which is one of my points here, and time 10 seconds is my other point. Everybody see that? Hopefully you can see that. Um, or no, time is five seconds for, my, for one of my points and time is 10 seconds. So let me just point that out. All right, so that line is five seconds and this this one's already here at, it's, it's at 10, right? Okay, so anyways, um, so, so that's, so when I put that on the bottom of this denominator, right, or the bottom of the fraction, which is the denominator, I have 10 seconds as my final minus five seconds because uh, time always moves forward. The greater time will always be final. And when you subtract on the bottom, the, t the answer for time will never be negative. So you will always get a positive number on the bottom. That same is not true of the top, right? Okay, so then at the top, this is where I have my position of six uh, meters, right? And hopefully you can see that because this five seconds is at six meters and uh, 10, 10 seconds is at what? What's this position? It's right at the x-axis. So uh, we know that that has a height or a y value of zero, right? So, so I'm saying that this is... Uh, uh, six meters for five seconds, and that's going to, and well, let me let me do this in order. And I have zero meters for ten seconds, so I, uh, ten seconds is going to be my final. So I'll put the zero meters above the ten, right? And my initial will be the uh, <clears throat> five seconds, so that'll be my six meters. All right, so it's going to look like that right there. All right, so let me go ahead and do the math. So we have zero meters minus six meters, which is negative six meters, divide, divided by 10 seconds minus five seconds, which is five seconds. So that's gonna equal uh, one and one fifth. That's gonna equal negative six, six fifths meters per second or negative 1.2. And we did expect a negative slope because that purple line is equal to, um, or does go down and to the right. So that, that is true. So I'm just gonna uh, come down here. Let's see, maybe write this. The slope is equal to negative 1.2 meters per second, um, which is our velocity. So I guess I should have wrote uh, equals V, or V equals. All right, so something like that. Okay, velocity equals negative 1.2 meters per second. All right, good. Uh, what distance does the object travel? All right, so once again, is this a right there question? I'm, out, I'm looking down at 12C, moving on to the next part. What distance does the object travel? Is this a right there question? Is this an area, is this a slope question? And this is actually gonna be a right there question. Um, let's look at why this is. Uh, what color, what color? Maybe gray, no. I'll just, maybe just stick with um, black right now. All right, so uh, for this first 
part of, of the trip this object takes, right? It starts at position zero. I know that because right here at time zero seconds where I'm drawing this dot is, or the origin is, uh, the, the line is, is at that point. Uh, so it starts at zero. And then we, then it has the slope here where it has a positive constant velocity, right? Where I just drew that squiggly line. And the object goes from uh, zero, right? As I'm trying to draw another squiggly line, it, it goes from zero to this position here, which is six. So what I'm trying to say is that by going up, or by, it's not really up, by, by in this first five seconds, the object travels six meters, right? And then, let me get a different color, uh, maybe brown. Um, then in the next five seconds, right, it travels this downward slope, and this is uh, from six back to zero. So this is another six meters. So, so what I'm saying here, looking at distance, right, just how far it moved, it traveled the, the black path, and, and or not really that, yeah, it, you can think of it that way. It went from zero to six, and, and, and that six meters, and then from six back to zero, which is six more meters, where I have the brown line. And, and so we can now answer these questions, right? So what distance does the object travel in five seconds? We'll say six meters. And what does it travel in the full 10 seconds? We would say 12 meters. Okay. Um, what is the displacement of the object at five seconds? All right, displacement, whenever they ask displacement, go ahead and bring that formula out, right? Delta X equals XF minus XI. This just really helps. So at, at um, five uh, seconds, we know the object's position is, um, <clears throat> is six meters. And this is going to be its final because the object starts initially at uh, zero seconds where it's at zero meters. So here we're seeing that delta x at five seconds is equal to six meters. And this is the same as the distance at five seconds. So these, these answers, right, I can write it up here if you like. These answers are no different for five seconds. But what about at 10 seconds, right? So at 10 seconds, um, now, I'll go ahead and write my formula again. Another reason you should always write your formulas, and I'll try not try to make my triangle look like a triangle, uh, is um, that you're going to memorize them. And so uh, ideally, you have these formulas memorized by constantly writing them. And, uh, and that's really the best way to go about it. Uh, so anyways, I always start by writing my formula out with no numbers. Then I'm going to go ahead and plug some numbers in. So final, final position will be at 10 seconds. And we said before that at 10 seconds, um, if we look back up at the graph, it's back here at zero. So we're saying that uh, our final position is zero. Our initial position was zero as well, right? Because it started right here. If you look at the graph, you can see that. And so, therefore, I have zero minus zero, and so my displacement is zero meters. And, and this is different than the distance, right? The distance it traveled was 12 meters. Now the displacement is, is different, right? Displacement is um, how uh, is the net movement from the object's starting location. So uh, the object didn't didn't move anywhere from its starting position, didn't change its position from its starting position. Maybe that's the best way to say it for displacement. There was no change in position, so that's why we're seeing zero meters. The object ended up back at the origin. Distance is just how far something travels, and so obviously it moved some, and it ended up moving 12 meters. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go to the next one. All right, so once again, first thing before we even tackle the problem, you remember I just said a second ago was what is always to look at the um, the axes right what do you kind of graph do you have because if you read those wrong and start doing the calculations wrong because you think you have a certain graph uh, makes the questions a lot different and you're gonna get way different answers um, okay so uh, this is velocity notice on, on the y-axis versus time 
time is always on the x-axis. Okay, and that makes it the independent variable. All right, so the dependent variable would be a velocity, but you don't have to know that, but I just thought I'd mention it. All right, 13a, where is the object at five seconds? Okay, so once again, is this a right there question? Is this an, a slope question or an area question? When it says where is the object, what it's asking for here is uh, position. And when it asks for position, we have to remember that this is hidden on the graph, right? It's not, it's not going to be directly readable from velocity versus time. And then we have to ask ourselves, was well, it slope? Is it area? What is it? And, uh, well, if, if, if we think about slope, right, what the heck is slope on this graph? Well, slope is the change in the y-axis, which in this case is going to be velocity, divided by the change in the x-axis, which is delta, which is time. So, so this is going to be acceleration. So that's not going to help us, right? So what about area? Well, area is um, what you get when you take the, uh, your, your axes and multiply them, right? Your base times your height. Uh, well, what happens when you take a base in seconds, right? Because time is the x-axis. That would be our base. And multiply it by a height. Well, our height is velocity, which is in meters per second. And we can see right there that what we're going to get is a change in position when, when we uh, take area. So area is going to equal a uh, change in position. Another way to think of that um, would be if you take, uh, let's see here, if you take time, let me write it this way, time and multiply it by velocity, right? And we remember that velocity is equal to delta x over t. So if you multiply those two together, grab that red marker again, you get delta x. And so the area is going to equal delta x, or change in, change in position. It's not position per se, it's change in position. And, uh, and that's an important thing to remember. Um, so anyways, um, and, and I'll try and have examples where I bring that up. But, but that'll be on, on probably more on future problems. Okay, so, all right, so at five seconds, so what they're saying by, by saying where is the object at five seconds, they're saying that we only have to take the area between zero and five seconds, so this area right here. And we can see that the base is going to be five seconds. The height is going to be six meters per second, but this is a triangle. So our area formula is going to equal one-half base times height. So we're saying that area is, is delta x equals area, right? And delta x is going to equal um, the base times the height, which is going to equal uh, five seconds times six meters per second. But it's a triangle, so I'm already, I'm already kind of... Uh, Forgetting something here, that the area of a triangle, let's see, I guess I'll just keep it like this, um, that the area is equal to one-half base times height. So we can't forget that one-half right there. All right, so one-half of 5 times 6 is 30. Uh, the red marker out for a second, cancel off those seconds. So 5 times 6 is 30 times a half is 15, so we're saying 15 meters is the object's change in location. So here, here's what I mean by change in location. Let me, let, me draw, let me draw that box around there. So what I'm saying is this. If you are like, well, the object is at 15 meters, right? 
That would be true, but you're assuming something. What are you assuming if we just said it's it, instead of saying like I, I'm telling you that this is delta x. If you said it was just x final, what are you assuming? Well, where are you assuming it started? You're assuming it started at zero, right? But if I was going to be difficult and make a tough question, I would say assume the object starts at 100 meters. And if the object starts at 100 meters and then changes its position, has a delta x of positive 15 meters, then where the heck would it be then? Well, it wouldn't be at positive 15 meters, right? It would be at 115 meters, right? Because think about it, right? Let me draw it up here. Uh, God, I don't have any room. Um, I guess I have some room right here. So, so I'm saying this, delta x equals xf minus xi. And if you started at 100 meters and you, and you had a displacement of positive 15 meters and the xf is what you wanted to know, check it out, right? And this is positive 100 meters. All right, so you, so you have this negative sign hanging out in the middle here, right? I'll put a little red there. You have that negative sign, that subtraction there that you got to deal with. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to kick the, uh, it's going to be negative 100 meters because of the subtraction sign. We're going to kick that negative 100 over to the other side by adding 100 to both sides, right? And you can see that this is going to equal an xf of 115 meters. All right, that's a little tougher to understand uh, concept there, meaning that, that the graph gives you delta x. It doesn't give you position, right? It gives you change in position. And, 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 and if you start somewhere other than zero, then the graph would tell you that your change in position of positive 15 would get you to 115. All right, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll try and bring it up again in the future. All right, 13b, what is the velocity of the object at time equals two seconds? All right, so on a velocity versus time graph, this question is a right there question. So let me go ahead and, um, let me go ahead and show you that. So at time two seconds, the velocity is going to be uh, this right here, which looks like somewhere between three and four. And what we want to do here is actually use the slope here to kind of to, to, to gauge that, right? And we can see that it's at three seconds, it's at 2.4. And at one second, it's at 4.8. So it looks like the slope is decreasing by 1.2 um, meters per second. So a negative 1.2 meters per second. I guess this would be the acceleration at uh, two seconds. So if we're right, I'm going to go ahead and write the prediction down here. So we're predicting by looking at this that the acceleration, this is our prediction, is equal to negative 1.2 meters per second, per second, right? Or uh, negative 1.2 meters per second squared. All right, that's our prediction. Uh, just based on looking at that slope, and, and uh, I'm talking about this slope right here, right, in yellow. And uh, yeah, and so I'm guessing that this, if, if my guess is correct, that this, is, this point is uh, 2 comma 3.6, just by looking at the way the graph is trending right there, right? So what is the velocity at two seconds? Uh, we would say 3.6, right? Because that, j just from reading the graph, we can see it's between three and four, and we're going to say it's 3.6. So last graph, velocity was a slope question. This graph, velocity is a right there question, and we just look at the graph, and we just follow it over. Um, all right, good. Uh, what is the acceleration of the object at two seconds? All right, so on this one, let me see if I can maybe get a little more room here, um, maybe add a page. Let's see. I think I'd remember how to do this, but clearly I can't remember. Let's see. That's not it. Dang, is it the plus sign? It's not the plus sign. Uh, 
Okay, I think I go here. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so what we're gonna do then is we are going to uh, find the acceleration at two seconds. And so once again, we're finding the slope of that yellow segment that I was interested in. And I'm gonna take the final points on that segment. So this point right here and this point right here, as soon as right, you know, I, I do that and I cover up everything I'm, I'm trying to say. So that yellow segment, and once again, uh, this point right there and this point right here. Okay, so times there for those two points looks like five seconds for the final and zero seconds for the initial. So let's go down here. Let's get rid of this. This doesn't have to be here anymore. All right, so coming down here where we have a little more room. I guess I have some room right there, I think. I think this is going to work. Let's try this. All right, so uh, we're saying that this is true. Um, let's go ahead and expand this out. So acceleration is equal to VF minus VI over TF minus TI. You know, usually we don't write the TF and TI, right? But, but, but here it helps when we're doing slope. Okay, so final velocity, or let's do the times first as always, right? Times are super easy. So we're saying five seconds and zero seconds. And if that, you know, if that doesn't make sense, pause it and confirm that that's the case with those two uh, circled points. All right, and then the, uh, the velocity should be, um, what, zero meters per second minus six meters per second, which is the Y coordinate. All right, and, and then we can go ahead and, and crunch that. We get negative six meters per second per five seconds. All right, and you kind of see where that's going. That's the same as it was last time, negative 1.2 meters per second per second, which is exactly in line with our prediction. All right, because of the symmetry of this graph, you know, when you look at over at the other side, can you say for sure that this green segment, right, is, is going to be the same? Um, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, so it is going to be the exact same slope except for one big difference, which is, is going to be positive because it's up and right. So uh, I'll just go ahead and calculate it anyways just because I'm sure some people are like, what? I don't believe you. Show me the math. And I'll be like, all right. Okay, so uh, final velocity now. Ooh. Well, final time, right, is going to be, I'm going to use this point. Let's see, I'm going to use this point where I have a star next to it. And my initial now is going to be five seconds, right? Initial and final are relative. And that's a confusing idea about physics is that um, anything can be final as long as it's after the initial. And anything can be initial as long as it's before the final. All right, so... Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and get some times in there, right? Times are the easy parts. Let's do those first. We got 10 seconds for our final. Initials, five seconds. Um, uh, VF is going to be, ooh, what is that going to be? It's kind of kind of tricky. Uh, God, does that say nine seconds? Mm, I'm not liking that. Um, oh, yeah, it's just, uh, okay, I see what it's saying. All right, yeah, it's just going to be six. That's, that's super easy. I don't know why I was, I was tripped up by that 4.8 next to my, anyways, okay. Uh, so uh, six seconds, right, or six meters per second. So we can go ahead and write that down for our final. And our initial is going to be zero. All right, we're going to get the same thing as we just got a second ago, but positive, just like I said. All right, cool. So two slopes there, both equal, but um, one negative and one positive. Equal in magnitude is what we like to say. So uh, this is 13D. Let me see here if I can highlight this. So this is the green slope right here, 13D, right, that I'm highlighting. And then the, uh, the other slope in yellow is the negative 1.2. So what I'm saying then is at time, uh, what did they ask for, two seconds? So this is the acceleration at two seconds. This is the acceleration at eight seconds. 
Now keep in mind, right, that this is also the acceleration at seven seconds. This is also the acceleration at nine seconds. This is also the acceleration over here at um, one second. This is also the acceleration at three seconds. And if you if you don't believe me, just you know, just take some points off that line and, and try it out. But but they they're on the same slope. They're on the same segment, so that's true. All right, good. Hopefully this is making sense. Hopefully this video is not too long. Seems like they uh, seems like I say that, and it's it's going to be a long video. All right, so let's go to this next one here. Um, so once again, notice what's on these axes, and it ticks me off that this is the case, but it got cut off. This is velocity, and this is time over here. So so this is very similar to um, the last problem. You can see I wrote it up here for you just because I was like, oh, you know, it's hard to see, um, but it's there's a title for it. So velocity versus time. All right, uh, that's good. Just similar to the last one we just did. Uh, 23, when is the object in the graph not moving? All right, it's not moving. Hmm. Um, well, it's not moving when the velocity is equal to zero. But what time does that occur at, right? And we should be able to look at the graph then because velocity is the y-axis. And when is it at zero? And, and this is kind of a crummy drawing. It looks like one of my graphs that I made. But um, it would be at this time right here, which is going to be time two seconds. And you can see where the line kind of looks like it goes through uh, beyond two seconds. Um, it's actually at two seconds. Now, if you're ever not sure, try not to use that point. But here we don't have a choice. So um, we're going to say uh, at two seconds. Okay, what is the acceleration of the object at three seconds? So once again, three seconds, we're taking the slope. Well, we're taking the slope only of this segment right here, right? And uh, I'm going to get rid of this blue circle. Okay, uh, so if that's the case, then um, we got to pick two points. So I'm going to pick any two points on the yellow segment. I'm going to pick the two end points because that's usually what I like to do, right? I told you that before. And... Um, what is the acceleration? Acceleration is slope. We just saw that with the last one. So let's go ahead and, and, and get that slope. So I guess I'll just write it right here. Uh, A equals delta V over delta T equal to VF minus VI over TF minus TI. All right, let's go ahead and plug some times in. So uh, for our times, uh, I like to do the final first, right? So I'm going to find that. looks like it's at... Uh, this time right here, which is four seconds. And our initial time is all the way back at zero. And you can see that, if you can see my dotted lines, kind of tough to see there. All right, so minus zero seconds. Uh, the final velocity looks like it's at two. And the initial velocity looks like it's at whatever this number is that's covered up by my blue highlighter, looks like negative two. So once again, final is positive two minus, don't forget the minus sign, right, the subtraction, minus um, my initial, which is negative 2. Okay, we should be getting a positive slope here. So um, because this goes up and to the right, uh, it, it is, um, we have a minus and negative, which makes sense. So our acceleration is going to equal 4, right, 2 plus 2 uh, meters per second per 4 seconds, which is equal to uh, positive one or one meter per second per second. You might say, why aren't you writing one meter per second squared? Um, I just, ugh, why did I do that? I just want to uh, um, do it this way because it makes more sense. I think mo most kids don't understand what one meter per second squared is saying. Like they get that it's acceleration, but they don't understand they don't understand its meaning, whereas this has more meaning, right? It means that the object is increasing its velocity by one meter per second every one second, right? That's what that's saying. So that's why that makes sense. Okay. Um, and, and seconds squared, that doesn't mean anything, right? It's just kind of, it sounds kind of like crazy, and it doesn't really help with understanding. It's a lazy way to write this, but, but it's a way that 
usually in physics you're going to use because it's much easier. So you just write one meters per second squared. But I'm more interested right now with you guys being so new to this stuff in understanding. All right, uh, 24, what is the acceleration of the object at t equals 3 seconds? All right, um, did I just find that? I think I just found that. Yeah, I just, I just did. I'm sorry. Uh, 24, then, is equal to um, 1 meter per second per second. So uh, I'm just going to write it down here. Whoops. Ugh, let me start over. Mess. All right, one meter per second per second. All right, um, good. And if you want to write a one on bottom, knock your socks off and go ahead and do it. Uh, what is the displacement of the object from zero to six? All right, where is displacement on a velocity versus time graph? It's hidden. It's not hidden in the slope. It's hidden in the other thing, which what we said was uh, uh, area. So let's find a uh, color here. We'll go with orange. Um, and we want to know from 0 to 6. So that's pretty much the whole graph of what I see here. So the trick with the area here is area is always between the curve or the line, whatever you want to call it, the curve and the x-axis. So it's this right here. And because the top um, has some weird shapes, we want to try and split this up into shapes that we can take the area of easily. So I'm seeing right here a square, uh, a triangle, and another triangle. And these triangles look identical, and they are. Um, the only thing different about them is one is going to have a negative area because it's under the x-axis, right, with negative uh, height, and one is going to have a positive area. And I can tell you already, without even doing the calculations, that those areas, um, because of the same, are, are going to cancel, right? But let's go ahead and, and, and do the problem just because uh, it, we should. Okay, so, the, so we have the area of two triangles and a square. Um, let's start with the first triangle on the left. So we're saying area of triangle, just so we're clear, is equal to one-half base times height, just like last time. I didn't really need that dot there. Oh, geez, Louise. Okay. Um, and, and that's going to equal um, one half. Uh, what's the base here? I think it's like two seconds. Yeah. What's the height? The height is negative two meters per second. Be careful with, see how I wrote this meters per second with the diagonal fraction sign? I almost don't like doing that because, once again, it confuses kids. I want you to realize that this is saying negative 2 meters with 2 and the meters on top and seconds on bottom. And that's why I kind of don't like writing it the way I just did. It's kind of – it. while it's good for me when I'm working physics problems, it's bad for teaching because it kind of – it kind of – I don't know – I feel like it confuses people, so I try to do things that make sense. Um, all right, so we have, uh, ooh, we can cancel some of these twos, right? Because check it out here. We got a two on top here and a two on bottom, so we can, we can cancel those away. So we're left with really negative two meters, it looks like. So let's go ahead and write that in, right? So we're saying that this right there, it's kind of hard to read. Um, but, but I think it's, it's reasonable. All right, is that, that triangle right there is negative 2 meters. So I'm just going to add it right down here. And, and now you can kind of see where I was going before with the other triangle, right? Um, let me point that out, which, what I'm talking about here. I'll use a little green here. So I'm saying that this has a base of 2 seconds, 4 minus 2. And this has a height of positive 2 meters per second. So we get 2 times 2 is 4. And the area of this triangle, but times a half, four times a half is two. So I'm saying that for this green triangle, our area here, whoops, is going to be positive two meters, right? And that's kind of what I wanted you to see. Let me put a little black on there so that's easier to see because that green is just not really legible. All right, for that triangle right there. All right, so we got the negative two meters and the positive two meters. 
Okay, so that's that's two of our areas for zero to that's zero to four. Let's get the last four to six seconds. So here are for this we just have area equals the base times height, right? Because it's just a tri it's, it's a square or a rectangle. It's a square actually, but 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 it's uh, side squared or whatever, which is base and height are the same. So um, so what we have here then is the area is equal to, um, this is two seconds, height is, is two meters per second. Once again, we can cancel off some seconds there and we're left with um, positive four meters. So we're saying that this right here is positive four meters. So to get the displacement from zero to six, all we're gonna do is add up, let's see, so I could write delta x total is equal. Oh, I don't like where I'm writing this though. I feel like it's gonna be, ah, uh, it'll be all right. If delta x total is equal to negative two meters, right, for that first triangle, plus positive two meters. I'm just gonna write two meters. I'm not gonna write the positive sign. Um, plus, uh, what was the last one for? Okay. Do the math there. These two cancel away. I didn't use red, but that's okay. Is equal to positive four meters. All right. What about total distance? So this refers to question 25. Okay. What about total distance? All right, well, this, can, this is fine too, right? This is very, very simple now that we, we have um, what we have. So I guess we could say um, mm, distance. Well, now we don't care about direction, right? So we're going to do the same calculation but without direction. So we have 2 meters plus 2 meters plus 4 meters. I could have put absolute values around all of the last calculation, but I'm trying not to keep it. I'm trying not to complicate things. So distance is going to equal 8 meters. All right. You can see once again that they are not the same answer. Uh, delta X total or displacement and distance. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the last one. All right, so once again, position versus time. Uh, make note of that. If you want, you can add an X right here where it should be. Uh, first question says, where is the object at the start of the graph? All right, so at the start of the graph, so that would be at time zero, right? Uh, let me see if I can get a highlighter here. So at time zero, get this orange line pointing to its location. It looks like it's starting at uh, this negative four down here, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and write that in. Let's go x equals negative 4. All right, um, good, good. Uh, 28, when is the object moving the fastest? All right, this is when um, its velocity is the greatest. Really, it's asking for speed here, too. So really, it's the magnitude of the velocity. So meaning we don't care about sign, right? Because this one's moving the fastest, we want the speed. This is, uh, velocity is where? Well, uh, it's not right there. So it's either got to be in slope or area. Well, what's the slope? Slope is equal to the change in the y-axis or the change in the x-axis, and that's velocity. So if we... We can find the velocity when it's, uh, or it's when it's going the fastest would be when the slope is the steepest, right? So we don't even have to do all the calculations as long as we look for the steepest slope. And it's pretty clear, I think, from this uh, graph. Let me draw some, some, uh, some different slopes here. We got this slope, this blue. I don't know what color. Yeah, light blue. We got, um, let's do pink, got pink right here. Let's do, uh, I don't know, what color haven't we done yet? Gray, all right. All right, let's do one more. Let's go, uh, I don't know, I feel like these, there's a lot of greens here. All right, how about forest green? I think this is forest green. I don't know what kind of green that is. All right, so um, anyways, what color 
has the steepest slope and it should be obvious that it's blue. So what are those times? Those times are from zero to, what is that? Two seconds, it looks like. Yeah, zero to two seconds. So let's go ahead and write that down. When is it moving fastest? Um, uh, uh, time, time, zero seconds to two seconds. All right, how long is the object not moving? Okay, well, it's not moving if you're listening in the last uh, graph when the velocity is equal to what? Zero meters per second. But velocity, right, is where? Velocity is slope. So where on the graph is the slope zero? What color? And you should say, uh, pink. So that would mean what time? That would be when t equals what? Uh, t equals two seconds to four seconds. And there's actually a better way to write that. Um, I think it would look like this. It would say that t is greater than two seconds and t is less than, oh, there's a less than sign, less than four seconds. And the reason why this would be better is because this would, um, this would tell me that, um, that two seconds and four seconds are not included because um, we don't know the slope at two and four. They're cusps. They're corners. They're points that, uh, you know, look at two seconds, right? I'll, I'll, I'll draw another circle around it, right? Two seconds. Is it part of the pink slope or is it part of the blue slope? Let me get rid of that. Is it part of the pink slope or the blue slope? Of course, that goes to the pink line. Um, yeah, you don't know, right? So what, what's the velocity at two? Is it pink or blue? Um, and, and, and so that's my point, right? So the a better answer would would say that t is between two and four seconds, but not including either. I think another way you can write that, um, let me show you something else. Another way you can write that is with, I think this is called interval notation. And what it is, is when you, you write a parenthesis here and you write two seconds, and then you write comma, um, four seconds, something like this. And that means in between two and four seconds, but not including either. If we wanted to include both two and four seconds, we would write it like this. All right, I don't use that notation a lot, but I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And uh, it's an it's a even faster way of conveying that knowledge, where the parentheses mean uh, that it does not include the values, right? And the brackets mean that it does include those values. And the comma just says it's between two and four seconds. All right, I, I don't know if you've seen that before, but that's, uh, I believe that's called interval notation. I'm fine with whatever notation makes the most sense. Uh, I'm not too worried about it because uh, I ain't got time for that right now. And, and, and uh, I'm just more concerned with you guys learning physics uh, I think this is more of a math concept. Um, so um, I'll let the math teachers do the math, and, and I'll try and stick to physics as much as I can because um, there's plenty of physics to learn. Not that, you know, I don't want to talk about math. I do like to talk about it, but, but plenty to learn in this class. All right, um, let's go to the next one. How far does the object move total? All right, well, let's look at this. Um, so we got all these different color segments to add up, right? Blue, it looks like we're going from negative four to positive four right here, right? How far is that? Negative four to positive four, that's eight, okay? Then we go from positive four on pink to positive four. We don't go anywhere, we just stay at four. How far is that? Zero, all right, that makes sense, right? Because at pink, we have zero velocity, right? So if our velocity is zero, we're not changing positions. So therefore, our distance is gonna be zero from two to four seconds. 
Okay, what about the gray line? Well, we go from 4 back to, or 2, negative 2, not back to 2, negative 2. So 4 to negative 2, that's going to be 6. All right, and then the green line, well, we just hold position right at negative 2. So this is going to be 0. So I have 8 plus 0 plus 6 plus 0. That's going to be 14 meters. I'm not right in the zeros. And there you go. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. Um, I, uh, yeah, try not to make it a very long lecture, and I think it was kind of a long lecture. All right, you have the rest of them to do. Um, I think that's for not this assignment, though. Uh, this assignment was just to watch the lecture and take notes and, and, and complete these with me. And then next time, I think, is to do the rest uh, so, so there you go. All right. Have a good day.